Last summer, he took his one-man show to the Edinburgh Festival, where he was a huge success, selling out every night. And it's my great pleasure to introduce a man to you who's going to demonstrate that medicine is the best form of laughter. Please welcome Dr. Kevin Jones. <laughs> Hey, fantastic to be here. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank you to Peter Young. Peter was actually at Liverpool University Medical School with me. Uh, he wasn't a medical student, obviously. He was in a bottle in the pathology lab. <laughs> I mean, look at him. It's like being introduced by a corpse. <laughs> Peter Young was actually voted at school the man most likely to marry outside his species. <laughs> He did, he married a human being. Um, do you remember the days when you go into a theatre or a cinema and there'd be nothing but smoke? Do you remember those fantastic days? I wish they'd come back those days, because I hate this no smoking in public. I bloody hate that. I do. I know you're a bit surprised, aren't you? You thought I'd be standing here telling you about the mutilating and putrefying effects of the pernicious habit. But I actually encourage cigarette smoking, because I need the business. And then... Um, <laughs> No, I do. When I finish my chest clean, I get bolt and I go down the schools and I give out fags. Yeah. Come on, Sonny, smoke this, you look hard. You know, yeah, those kids are my pension. I, um, I've given up smoking myself. I'm very, very fit now. I go to the gym. I was in the gym this morning. Some blooming tattooed, bald-headed kid came up and said, I can press 200 kilograms. What can you do? I said, well, I don't want to boast or anything, but I can read. Um, <laughs> I guess my entertaining career started when I went to uh, St Anselm's College in Birkenhead. That was my secondary school. It was a Catholic school, obviously, and it was run by Christian brothers. Christian brothers. They were celibate, but uh, they weren't priests. So, uh, <laughs> so we weren't sexually abused. You know. no. Even when we asked, there was nothing. <laughs> But what they did do, right, I'll tell you what they did women do, they used to smash us with these, um, these leather straps with whalebone inserts, do you know what I mean? They used to batter us to within an inch of our lives. And I remember Wednesday afternoon at St Anselm's was French, so I used to go down Yates's Wine Lodge and drink, yeah, and drink white wine, because to be honest with you, I always knew I was going to be a doctor, and if I met an ill Frenchman, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to treat him anyway, so... But what I did do, <laughs> what I did do at St Anselm's, I was famous for this. We had a leavers disco, you know, after A levels, we had this leavers disco at St Anselm's. It was a pretty turgid affair, really, because we were a single sex school. Anyway, <laughs> me and my mate, Mickey Russell, right, we, we went off to the Horseshoe Pass near Clangothlin. Have you ever been to the Horseshoe Pass near Clangothlin? Well, the sheep there that eat out your hand. Right, so we went up there with a Land Rover and we got three sheep and we put them in the Land Rover and we took them to the disco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not to dance with, or, or worse. Right, what we did, right, what we did with the three sheep, and this was genius, at the end of the disco we let the three sheep loose in the school, only we put signs around each of their necks, right? Sheep one, sheep two, and sheep four. <laughs> Yeah. Bloody genius, the brothers were up all night looking for sheep today. <laughs> then I went to Liverpool University, but we had a sort of conventional, traditional medical education there at Liverpool. It's all changed now, there's some medical students in the, in the audience and they'll hate me for this, but we had to do proper exams when we were a medical student, we had to do essays. Do you remember essays? Do you remember them? I had to do an essay on the median nerve, right? It was eight pages I had to do. The median nerve, it starts from the brachial plexus in the neck and then it travels down your arm, sending off branches to every muscle till it comes down to the very, very tip of your fingers. Eight pages I did an essay on the um, root of the median nerve, right? Do you know what they get now? They'd have multiple choice, wouldn't they? The me yes, they would. <laughs> Yeah. The median nerve is A in the arm. 
B in the leg, C neither, D both, E Saturday. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just ridiculous and all they get now. You know, we had to do science when I was a medical student. The, the, the medical students now, they're, they're all holistic, aren't they? They're all touchy-feely, they're all learning about how to take a history and how to communicate, you know. They know everything there is to know now about bereavement, except how to stop it. <laughs> And then do you remember philosophy students? Do you remember philosophy students, for God's sake? Hey, at Liverpool, the philosophy students, they used to have a lecture in March. Yes. <laughs> uh, the medical students in Liverpool, we had ten lectures a day, right? The philosophy students in Liverpool, they had this lecture in March, <laughs> to which they were given this eternal philosophical conundrum to debate. You've, you've all heard it. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> yeah, they used to debate that from March till July <laughs> and then hitchhike round Greece. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> I mean, I've got a much more important question, and that is if a man says something and there's no woman there to hear him, is he still wrong? 